Good evening and welcome to the Finance Subcommittee meeting of the Brockton School Committee, Tuesday, February 2nd, 2021. <clears throat> Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 20, pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting laws requirement that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public, so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast Channel 9. The public can access this meeting via this link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. Next, I'll call the roll to establish a quorum. <clears throat> Second. All right, Mayor Sullivan. Here. Vice Chair D'Agostino is here. Um, Ms. Asak. Here. Mrs. Mendez. Here. Mr. Minicello. Here. Mr. Rodriguez. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Here. All right, we have established a quorum. Our agenda for the evening. Uh, first item of business is purchase of buses and vans, uh, followed by stimulus funding, followed by FY21 budget update, followed by FY22 budget update, followed by school warehouse, and finally other business. Um, so on the purchase of buses and vans, uh, shall I assume that's why Mr. Petronio is with us this evening? Yes. Mark, could I jump in? Because we just had a meeting about this. Sure, Tim. The Go subcommittee right ahead. Meeting. Yeah, I just wanted to report that the subcommittee has met today at 5.30 p.m. on the uh, on item one, the purchase of buses and vans. And there was a motion made and seconded to, to recommend favorably to purchase the buses. That motion was made and seconded. And I'm bringing it to you that we wanted to okay. move this favorably um, from that subcommittee. Okay. And did the subcommittee, when they when they voted, was there any mention of, or did it get down to the level of making the full purchase or just partial? Or um, I was watching it on YouTube, so I know that was part of the conversation. It, I think we left it up to the finance get... meeting. You're going to have, yeah, it left up to the finance committee, number one. Number two is, and Al will correct me if I'm wrong, um, and the mayor can jump in as well. Um, the school committee can only approve the purchase of the five million that could be switched, correct? Correct. If, we, if their school, if we wanted to go forward with the purchase of all of it, then that other piece of money has to go to the city council. Correct. Right. Okay. I just want to be clear that, you know, I'm sure you're going to talk about it, but I just want to be clear that coming out of the finance, I mean, coming out of the transportation meeting, um, I think, I, I think what we can do, what the school committee can do is approve changing the five million, switching the, uh, moving the $5 million. Correct. Because we have that money is in the budget. But I, I thought originally we we were under the impression it had to go back to the to the council to then be reappropriated as a capital expenditure, not a transportation expenditure. Am I maybe I misunderstood? I obviously want to make sure we do it correctly so that there's no problems later. Exactly. Are we sure that we don't need to do that, or do we need to look into that? I mean, I would I would suggest that we get an opinion from Peter Mello or Sarah, uh, a legal opinion. Um, because the five million or five point one is, is cash on hand that was already uh, allocated, uh, and that's sitting there in the queue. But um, again, I I wouldn't want to uh, misspeak, nor would would Aldo or Mike or even Troy Claxon. Um, so again, I'd respectfully ask that um, whatever happens tonight from the subcommittee, we we get a legal opinion to uh, to give us guidance. Thank you. All right, I'll reach out to Peter, 
uh, tomorrow and uh, get an opinion on that and ask him to circulate that around to everybody so that, that we all get to see that. And um, All right, that's fine. I mean, again, I know it's not going to hold us up from anything tonight, but whatever, however we do it, we need to make sure we do it right. Um, okay. All right, Tim, thank you um, for that and for bringing that forward to the finance subcommittee. Um, before Aldo gets started, was there any other comment thus far? So Aldo, you want to give us, you want to just give the finance uh, an overview of um, the, you know, the difference between half buying vans now and I believe six buses. Uh, are they called mini buses? I'm sorry, they're not called vans. Um, and then six large buses and then just go over the finance. Yeah, so when we began this proposal a few months back, we estimated that we'd probably have about five million or so that was unspent this year. And you know, Mark, you're correct. Any monies that are not spent for the purposes that were given go back to the city, basically as unspent dollars. So the question that we'll raise with Peter Mello is, since the money came over to us without um, any restrictions on it, does the school may have the ability to take those funds and say, we're going to now basically convert those funds from operations, um, ordinary maintenance funds over to capital funds. So if we can, then we can do it ourselves. If not, it goes back to the city. So in looking at what we had for cash on hand, we determined that we could buy pretty much half of the school buses. So Dr. Cobbs, myself, met with Peggy Kalea. We started reviewing the different buses, the students that we moved. And the first thought was we'd buy all of the mini buses with that. That would, per, that would cover all of them. But after we worked through it a little bit and said, well, you know what? It would be great if we had maybe a half dozen of the large buses. We can use them for sporting events when we move our you know, football team, our basketball team, our uh, tennis team, when we uh, go on field trips. So if we had those on hand, that would make um, that much um, of our transportation needs that much at our, our disposal, make it better for us. So we'd balance off maybe a half dozen of the full-size buses and the rest, all the mini buses. When you say the mini buses, there's ones with handicap, you know, uh, lifts on them to lift wheelchairs. There's certain buses that have child restraint that we can put some of the uh, um, um, infants in for the, for the program at the high school, um, some for the younger kids. So we're looking at that whole mix. But either way, we have pretty much all of the smaller buses picked up. Um, through that 5.1 million, roughly is what it is. But that, we right away start saving. We um, we would have to set up a location to work out of. You know the facilities. We have cameras on the buses. We have GPS monitors on the buses. We have safety equipment on the buses. Everything all set up um, to run. The buses are all brand new under warranty. Um, it would provide us. Um, anyways, the first, second year with very, very little maintenance on the actual vehicles themselves, we could be up and running on the system. So that would give us the ability if we decided to go with a full fleet, then we'd have to request the city to either pay for it or to bond it and borrow the money. And we can talk about that point later. But at least working with what we have right now, we can begin moving on this process, getting it in place, getting it set up to hire drivers and getting the whole office basically built out of what we needed. So the, re the request that's moving forward at this point will be, I guess, providing we, the school committee has the authority, we'd like to appropriate 5.2 million, it's 5.145, but 5.2 million um, of these funds into the capital account so that we can then place an order to purchase these buses. The manufacturer of the buses is on state contract. They do a lot of work across the state. They do Boston, all of Boston's buses, uh, they're a very well-known outfit, uh, Bluebird Bus Company. Um, if we place the order in the next week or two, then we will have buses um, by, by mid-summer and we'll be in great shape for September 1st. So that's basically where we stand. Um, I see a question from Mr. Minicello. Tom, your video is doing something funny. It's not really a question, it's a suggestion. Um, where well, you're talking about a substantial um, appropriation uh, for a use that was not originally earmarked uh, from an expenditure for from funds approved by the city council, mm -hmm. I would suggest that there should be a meeting between the mayor, uh, uh, Mark Yu, and um, city council president, just to um, review this um, 
review this plan because this is going to be an ongoing uh, expense for years to come that would require city council appropriation in the future. So I think um, I would have that meeting uh, between um, you know those parties. You will obviously as the vice chair um, as part of this process. Just a suggestion. Yeah, Tom, I think that's a, a great idea, and um, I don't see why we can't make that happen. Um, and you know, so again, I'll I'll confirm with Peter, but. Um, I don't think there's any reason not not to do that. I'm sure that the the mayor and, and, and council president Farwell and I can set that up. Sounds good. All right. Um, okay, great. So any other, <coughs> excuse me, um, comment or question on this? Um, Aldo, what do you need from us? Do you need us to move something forward tonight on this? I would say just move it favorably to the regular school committee meeting. And hopefully between now and then we get the answer from the attorney and the answer from the council president. All right. Um, it seems like we need, but we do, do we want to, and, and again, I guess I, I'm asking, do we need to make this decision in this, in this body tonight? Uh, are we going all the way or are we doing half? Is that, well, we could only do half because that's all the funds that we have available to okay. go all the way. We'd have to go before city council and ask for either the right. cash or ask for the bond. We'd have to appear before them first. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. I just, again, want to get clarification, make sure we handle this properly. Um, all right. Any other committee member want to comment on the uh, issue of, of basically purchasing buses Mr. Sullivan. Yeah, I, I don't know if you're ready for a motion. That's what I was going to do. Um, if there's no comment from anybody, then by all means. I'll make the motion that we move favorably to the full school committee to approve the buying of the buses. Check it. We have a motion on the floor by Mr. Sullivan, properly seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. On the motion, Mr. Vice Chairman, Please, I just wanna make sure that the record reflects that um, the vote, if it's favorable or unfavorable, still has to be conditioned to getting a legal opinion for guidance purposes. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, and that's, that's the tough part because we're still pending a legal opinion. Um, and the meeting with, with me, you, and the council president. Um, Just on, on the motion again, um, I think we can multitask. I mean, if, if Tim um, modified his motion, again, with the condition attached to get a, a favorable legal opinion that allows this, this body to, to do the 1.2 or whatever, whatever the number is through Aldo, um, at the same time, um, the vice chairman and I will set up a meeting with council president Farwell to, to discuss it. Um, and again, if the, if this body decides that they want to buy everything, we would have to go before the legislative body, the city council, anyhow. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So Mr. Sullivan, are you. Yes. I'll amend the motion. Before you do, it looks like the superintendent wants yeah, to. Yeah. I just think now I think, uh, Mr. Sullivan needs to put, a, um, the actual number in. Yes. It's 5.2. So 5.2 million. Conditioned upon. Um, consult with council. And then between, yeah, because by the time we get to the full committee to take a full committee vote on this, we'll have been able to ha get the opinion of council will have been able to, the mayor and Wynn and I had to have that meeting and we can report all those things back to the full committee before they vote. So I think that makes sense. All right, so Mr. Sullivan, are you able to uh, amend that motion? Yes, I am. I want to amend the motion to $5.2 million subject to the legal approval of our, our legal consultants. Okay. Mayor, we think we got that. 
Yeah, I just I know when the, the last subcommittee at 530, Aldo gave uh, a hard number. I think it wasn't it 70 vehicles for 5.2 million. Yes, it was 70 vehicles. I think if Mr. Sullivan was going to state the dollar amount, he might might want to incorporate, you know, up to 70 vehicles to be purchased for purpose of school transportation, something like that. 70 buses. So maybe, yeah, frame it as, you know, the amount of 5.2 million to purchase up to 70 uh, buses for school transportation. Yeah, Sorry, I'm Tim. in the motion <laughs> on the $5.2 million to purchase up to 70 school buses with a consultation with our lawyer Great. to make sure it's all legal. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so I think we're I think we're good there. Um, do we have a second on that amendment? Second. All right. The motion made and, and amended by Mr. Sullivan. Uh, original second by Mrs. Sullivan. Amendment is seconded by Mr. Rodriguez. Um, if there's any uh, any any other comment on the motion before I call for a vote. All right, I'm going to call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Vice Chair D'Agostino is a yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't say yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got the last name right, right? That's yeah. right. I couldn't screw that one up. <laughs> uh, all right. What a nice it's both, both yeses. All right. Motion carries unanimous. All right. Next item. Stimulus funding. It's been a good year so far. It's very rare that you say that in a finance meeting. <laughs> But we were at this point last year, right before the pandemic, and we lost it all. So I guess what I can say is, um, you know, as, as everyone knows, we've received, well, we've approved 18 million from the county. Uh, the after school department has spent about 14. The city has spent probably about four. So that stimulus funding from the county worked out um, great for us. We're, we're still processing all our paperwork. Um, the county is, as you can imagine, they're buried in our paper, um, but they're making reimbursements to the city. Um, we just got notified that we had the Title I additional funds this year, the ESSER I. Those were a little over $4 million, 4.3 exactly. We just received notice that ESSER II, which will also come through Title I, no restrictions, 15.1 million we will get. And that's coming to us very shortly in the matter of a couple of weeks. Now that those funds are good until September of 2023. So we'll discuss um, how we'll try and hold those to help us with, you know, uh, late FY22, early FY23 budget, um, because as you'll see, the number of students we have is declining. Just last week, the governor announced a $21.3 million increase for Brockton. Uh, that's regular chapter 70 plus the Student Opportunity Act. My estimates, about 4 million of that is, you know, the regular chapter 70, 2% increase. And the balance of that is a Student Opportunity Act. Um, we did um, pretty much best in the state on those funds. Uh, the communities aren't as happy as we are. So we'll see what happens with the House and the Senate. But I don't think they can really um, cut down on those funds too much from us you know, as it moves along. When you net out the additional charter school costs, that 21.3 million ends up around 18 and a half million of additional funds for next year. I've got some slides if you need to see that. Um, that's, that's, again, great, great news for Brockton. We can now go back to the discussions you had last year, the superintendent about um, uh, positions and putting um, people back in place that we have gotten rid of over the years. Um, the Aldo. Yes. Um, are you talking about number four, FY22? No, I'm on stimulus funding. Okay, all right. Because this is all coming... The reason all these, this money's coming, it's coming from the federal government. Yep. So okay. Government. And then uh, just a few days ago, uh, Representative Cronin and the, and the rest of the um, state contingency announced there's an additional 1.2 million coming to Brockton for PPE and, and other um, 
items that affect um, kids coming back to school. So, um, and there's still other parts they're saying that might be coming our way. So everything right now looks rosy. Um, we have to really plan on how we're going to spend these, these funds. When we get into FY22, I'll show you how our student you know, enrollment has decreased and how that affects us. But as far as some of this funding, it's, it's, um, it's all coming our way. I mean, we deserve every penny of it, but it's coming our way, which is great. Yeah, it's about time. It's been heading anywhere but here for many, many years. So <laughs> I know other districts aren't, aren't happy that they didn't get as much, but um, I don't think any of them has cut close to $60 million either, so. Right. Just, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, just for point yes. of information, I think I think Mr. Petronio might have misspoke a little bit on the CARES Act. So the, the maximum is $18 million, uh, that we're entitled to. That's the earmark. We have not received that, but the breakdown is in $14 million on the school side and four on the city. Um, so we, we're, we'll work with Tom O'Brien. I actually have a meeting in Plymouth on Friday with Tom um, to see what the delay is on the reimbursement. So as soon as I get a hard number, we'll get to the school committee, the actual breakdown between school and city side. But know that to date, we've received seven million on the school side for the laptops and one million on the city side. And we're old an additional eight, um, 10 million. Uh, but we're already, already having the queue, another uh, six in there. Um, so just, just for point of information. Thank you. That's correct. I've, I've identified 14 million. We're not going to get it all, but. Yeah, because Troy Claxon just texted me. He had a heart attack right then when you said that. So that's the reason why I put it on the record. Thank you. I, I told him I got another million or two. I think I can still identify. <laughs> so. All right. So, all right. But that's separate from the Student Opportunity Act funding that you were talking about. I mean, yeah. you're still saying that net out, we should end up with 18 million that we can. And it sounds like the superintendent's got, wants to, when we get to the FY22 budget, has some thoughts on that. No, I just think with the Title I, it's, it's important for us to, when we're building our budget for FY22, um, you know, the good news about the, the money coming through Title I, which is about 15 million. Um, and the good news this time is there's none being taken off the top to go to private schools or go to the charter schools that that actually they're getting their own piece of of that money through title one again this was the latest um, stimulus package that was just passed and the good news is this money goes through al is it december of 2023 or is it through september of 2020 september of 2023 so charters might get a little piece of it we'll find out on friday there's a webinar okay. So we'll send we'll send that information if we have it in Friday's packet. But the point here is that um, you know it, it, this is obviously great news, but it's also important that um, we we're careful because this money is being able to keep you know pushed off that we don't have to spend it till September two thousand twenty three. And you know we don't we don't know what FY twenty three will bring. Um, it looks like we're going to get through next year in good shape and we'll get to that. But I just think, you know, we have to be careful with this, with this chunk of money to avoid any layoffs for anything that may happen in FY23. So, um, as again, we'll discuss that when we go through the budget process through the budget season, but you know, it's a good problem to have. <laughs> and it's, it's rare that we get to hold on to money for that amount of time. Usually it's, it's spend it or lose it. Yeah. Um, so it's it's good that yes, we 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 can actually hang on to that and uh, use it to address needs as they come, um, and and not have to, you know, have a, a real close deadline. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, I see your hand up. Yeah, I was I was just wondering, Aldo, on the fifteen point one million, it's got to be used by September of twenty three. Yes. If you don't use it, does that money have to be returned? Uh, with any type of grant like this, yes, but we've never had a problem using money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stay on top of that. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Any other member of the committee have a question or comment on the stimulus part of the uh, conversation? All right. Seeing none, I think we can move on. FY21 budget update. All right. FY21. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the budget to me is still very tight because I don't want to touch any of those other sources of funds. I want to get through with the, the bu budget we set up for this year. Um, you know, ESSER 1, 
the first 4.3 million we got is what I'm using to balance off this year. And I think uh, we'll be in decent shape. A lot of people think, well, school's not in session, you're not spending the funds. We are. 80, 85% of our budget is salaries and everybody is, is still here working. So um, we're, we're saving some money on paper and you know, few on water and a few items, but it's not um, substantial amounts of money, but I think we're fine. I was uncomfortable many months ago and now I'm comfortable for the rest of this year. So FY21, we'll get through and we'll be, I think, in great shape to move forward. Okay. All right. Yeah, so for once, it seems like we'll have a year where we don't have to keep the the the, uh, the defibrillator nearby Aldo's desk during the budget. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they keep it close anyway, Mr. D'Agostino. <laughs> <laughs> Until he changes his eating habits, we're going to keep it. Oh, <laughs> ouch. Ouch. Okay. We're going to move on to FY22 budget. All right. If I could on FY25, I want to try and share my screen. I want to uh, let's see. Let's do it. So what I want to do is bring up and show you the actual cherry sheet figures that pertain to us. The city figures aren't in here. If you can see the screen, um, you can see from FY20, we received 186.5 million in chapter 70. Then for FY21, we originally proposed a 2% reduction. We ended up getting like a 2% increase. We went from 186.5 to 189.2 million. So again, we, we're getting through FY21, um, okay. Now for FY22, the governor's proposed 210.5 million. That's a $21.3 million increase. That's chapter 70 with the Student Opportunity Act money. Um, what I've been getting information on is that most of that is due to our low income students. That's where a lot of these funds are being factored in, which is great because that's how it should be. Our charter school reimbursement this is them giving us back funds every year for the students that we've lost. Um, that's actually dropping down 229,000. The charter schools in our area have, I think at this point have maxed out the number of students they get. So our reimbursement goes down each year um, that they have them. So overall $21.1 million increase going down to our expenses. I don't know how, well, I'm sorry. School choice tuition is a 0%, $0 increase. My only guess is that they haven't finalized those numbers yet. Even at FY21 at 54,000, that was a third of what we usually get. And that number has been very consistent over the years, 125, 150,000 consistent. I don't know why in FY21 it went down to 54,000 and they're still proposing it for FY22 at 54,000. My assumption is that somewhere in the legislation, it probably says you will be reimbursed up to, <laughs> or you may be reimbursed. So as opposed to you must, so they're still putting something in there. It's, it's, it's something. Same thing on the school choice sending tuition. Um, this is the students that, that we have that come in from charters. They balance that at zero. So I think the same thing, they're waiting for their, their numbers to finalize on that. And of course, the big increase every year is the students who we lose to charters. That went up 2.4 million. That's $21.4 million a year we pay out to charters for our students. So that's a, that's, that's a big hit. So overall, we're looking at an $18.6 million increase for FY22. Our usual budget goes up anywhere from seven to 10 million. So that increase I think um, should sustain us uh, and give the school committee and the superintendent the ability to really look at um, putting programs and putting things back in place to get the district um, heading back in the right direction again. At the same time, I'll project that out over the next few years because we don't want to get into a situation where long-term costs have been put in place and we can't afford them. You know, I, I, I would love to see another 20 million from the Student Opportunity Act next year. So we'll have we'll have this will be the second year of it. So for the next five years after that, they're supposed to keep phasing in money. But again, the word may is there. They may give us nothing. They may give us twenty million. So um, we'll hedge and say that they'll probably go up ten million next year just to be safe, and we'll factor in and 
make sure our long-term costs can afford that. That's going to, that's going to take me some work. It's going to take me, you know, uh, um, um, slowing down um, lots and lots of new positions, but um, I think we should be able to stabilize um, where we stand. Uh, my next sheet, let's see. Uh, this just shows you our enrollment and our foundation budget. I've tracked it all the way back to 2008. Every year I put this together. You can see back in um, 08 and 09, we lost some students. The numbers in the yellow here. Our foundation budget was 154 million. Fast forward every year, we picked up two, 300 students. One year, 447 students we picked up. And 447 students is about $6 million. So that's a good increase. We picked that up two years in a row. And now the last few years, as you can see, a lot of this is due to charter and now some of it's due to pandemic. We've lost 60, 105, 225, 399. That was October 1st. Now, because of the pandemic, I think that number is over 700 right now. And those are students that have gone to charters and privates that hopefully we can get back. Because that 400, uh, that negative 400 students actually came out of our 21 million. So we would have had, if we hadn't lost those students, we would have had another $5 million more in that Student Opportunity Act money. So um, some, some districts like Fall River are screaming because they lost quite a bit of students and they didn't expect it to be hit this year. I know I talked to um, Lynn School District, they lost 900 kids because again, they will out put them into, into uh, privates and charters. So um, he sent me some very fresh texts when he saw we got all the money and he got nothing. <laughs> but um, that 400 students, that's a big loss. Um, hopefully we, if we open schools back up, you know, September back to normal, we'll hopefully get a lot of these students back. But this is what I was saying about, we really got to project out for the next two years where we're going to be so that we can balance. If we really have lost 700 students, that's over $10 million. That's a lot of money. That, that's going to wipe out what the Student Opportunity Act is doing for us. Um, this is the sheet I get every year I wait for from the Department of Ed. It basically breaks down how our money comes in. And what it shows is that we, we meet our net school spending. 210 million here is our new foundation amount. What's nice, what I wanted to show you was the city's portion went up a million four. So basically the city has to give us a million four more than last year, which is pretty much what they've been doing anyways. The governor tried out there pushing saying, you know, the Student Opportunity Act isn't gonna be such a wonderful thing for all of you because some of you are 50-50, not 80-20. Brockton gets 80% funding from the state, 20 from the local. Some of those cities that get 50-50 funding, they saw their contribution going way up. So they're not happy about that either. We're in the best position because we've always been budgeting that amount from the city, million, million and a half every year. And our, our budget went up 21 million. So we, I think, made out very, very well on that. My last sheet here is the one I work with the most. This takes all of our students across all of our grades and it shows us how we receive our money and how they get there. The first half here is preschool, um, kindergarten, elementary, middle, high school, and vocational. There's the number of students and then the dollars we receive for each of those students. Then moving over a little to the right, the one I always focus in on that I highlight is our low-income students. That number was 15,005 a few years back. It's at 13.8. Um, those of you who know Janice Johnson Plumer, she has been out there day in, day out, getting people signed up for SNAP, getting people on state assistance. As she does that, it helps our count go up. So she's been a big part of keeping this low income number uh, moving in the upwards direction, which in turn helps our school lunch program also. So those numbers, are, uh, as you look at them, um, they've got your English language learners. They, they used to have them all in one, now they broke them out. They've got your special ed kids in district and your special ed kids out of district. As you can see out of district is 18.3 million. We actually spend a little more than that. These are state numbers. But um, we, we, that's a huge expense. People do come to Brockton because we do a great program of special ed. Um, and the same thing with English language learners. So this is our $260 million foundation budget. That's where we are now. We're, we're over a quarter of a billion dollars is our school budget every year. That doesn't take into account the number of grants we have. We've gone from about 18 million in grants. We're probably up to 30 million in grants now with all the stimulus funding that's coming in. 
So that really um, puts us over the, the top of over 300 million in the school budget. That's, that's at this point, probably the fourth largest in the state uh, for budgets. And, you know, not a, it wasn't too long ago, we were below 200 million. So um, again, these are the sheets I work off of when I do my student counts, when I project for next year, how many students we have. Again, I focus on the low income, um, getting that number up. We're at, for overall, we had 17,092 students. Now we have about 16,001 in district. The rest are all kids at charters and out of district. They're all included in our costs. That number is about 70 kids less than Lynn. We have now moved into the fifth position in the state for larger school districts, Boston, Springfield, Worcester, Lynn, and then Brockton. We were ahead of Lynn before. So we've, we've, we've dropped below them because um, either they've moved, either the students have moved out or they're just not coming here as fast. So, and um, they're going to private schools. So I mean, I'd like to see the number get back up. If we can get our half of our students back, that'll put us back in the fourth position uh, in the state, which is, great because you know uh, all the work we've done at the state house is because we are who we are and we are as large as we are so um so that's about it for fy 22 uh, right now everything looks rosy it did this time last year let's hope that this the house and the senate don't um don't do anything to uh, change that thank you aldo um sure. i mean usually the governor's number is, you know, the lowest number we see, and it only improves from there. But exactly. um, obviously, that's certainly not a guarantee, given that, you know, we got a, a good number to begin with. Um, so we will keep an eye on that. Um, I, I see Mr. Menicello is looking to comment. Yeah, uh, when Aldo was going over the numbers with regard to the funding, um, I just want to point out to people that the increase with regard to the funding coming to the city of Brockton um, wasn't due to the um, goodness of the governor's heart. Uh, it was because of the advocacy that um, this city, uh, that the leadership in this city, that um, the um, district leaders, um, former superintendent Kathy Smith, obviously with the assistance of now Superintendent Thomas and the executive team and the school committee and the city council and, and former Mayor Carpenter, um, you know, the leaders of this city advocated for this city and everyone else came on board with us. And um, so that increase of you know, $10 million uh, and, and more money hopefully to follow uh, is because of the leaders of this city, A. B, um, Aldo points out, and rightly so, that there are a lot of students and families that are now opting for different alternatives. And I would just point out that that's something that we should all be very um, aware of because it is going to affect the bottom line and the quality of education that we can provide our students because obviously the more funding, the sharing of uh, uh, of uh, opportunity because of the numbers and the increase in funding um, helps the city. So, um, you know, certain, certainly many families uh, are not happy with the pandemic and um, are um, seeking other options uh, because of it. So it's something that we all need to be aware of. So that's about it. Thank you, Mr. Minicello. Um you know, and, and um, you know, because of COVID, again, we've certainly lost some, some students. And we were, we, as you saw, we lost some students from, to the charter and another, um, you know, and, and I'm sure some of the privates, but uh, hopefully with the Student Opportunity Act funding, we can put back the things that we had to cut, which were, I, I think, probably impacted some of the decisions that parents made. Maybe, maybe I'll be, maybe I'm wrong, but um, you know, certainly, uh, I think as we rebuild the district, as, as former Superintendent Smith used to say, um, you know, hopefully we can attract the, some of those students over the last few years back, because um, we really do have a, a lot to offer that you can't necessarily get in some of the smaller districts, but um, we'll see, you know, 
where this leads us hopefully hopefully uh to a good place and uh we can you know kind of get back on 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 the right track here um superintendent thomas yeah i just wanted to um echo what mr manichello said i i remember how many um trips with um former superintendent kathy smith that he and aldo made to the state house um and there were some very tough meetings that they'd come back and you know, they would have very tough meetings, um, but with the support of our state reps um, and Senator, um, you know, we continue to push. Um, we've, I know Mr. Minichello more than I uh, back then met several times with, with um, a consultant, Trip Jones, um, as we were ready to file the lawsuit along with, with uh, Worcester and, and Chelsea. Um, but again, for, but for the school committee, and then when the mayor was part of the city council, um, and also our families and teachers, um, you know, they loaded up buses. Um, the BEA members uh, went up to the state house a couple of times, and uh, and then families and parents went with them. Um, and again, uh, like Mr. Minichello said, a big hats off to um, you know our former superintendent. Um, the leaders of the city school committee, city council, former mayor, the late Bill Carpenter, um, Mayor Sullivan, uh, but also again, our, our, our teachers, the support of our union presidents um, and our families really pushing is I think why um, yes, we're seeing an increase of $21 million. And we were gonna see that last year and obviously COVID took that away, but um, to have it come back and now we know that for the next six years after they need to really, they do need to continue to fund the Student Opportunity Act. And let's hope there's not another pandemic that takes that away again. But um, I just wanted to echo what Mr. Minnesota said and, and, you know, and commend all that did so much um, to bring these funds to the city of Brockton. Yeah, and you know, I think the other thing worth adding on to that Mr. Minnicello said, you know, you, he made the comment that the governor didn't do this out of the goodness of his heart. No, in fact, uh, our current governor took office and immediately economically disadvantaged happened um, where they changed the formula to this new economically disadvantaged instead of the free or reduced lunch numbers and the damage began from there. And, you know, again, all of a sudden, what did we have? Although at the first day it was like 5,000 kids no longer counted as as, as low income or economically disadvantaged. I mean, 1,546. Did they all become rich all of a sudden? Of course not, you know, uh, but uh, those kids weren't counted and that that we took a big hit because of it. And they were still here in our district. I mean, nothing changed except that we didn't get the funding we needed. Um, so it certainly wasn't out of the goodness of, of his heart, but it was, as, as has been said, the advocacy of this district, the mayor, the council, uh, superintendent, former and current, um, this body. Right, I forgot also, Mr. I don't want to let, uh, you know, uh, um, also, former Mayor uh, Moses Rodriguez spent a lot of time with us, really pushing. Yeah, uh, in the six months he was mayor, he worked yeah. closely with us and continued to push uh, for more funding for the city as well. So, right, and former school committee members that aren't on anymore, and um, you know, Miss Plant, Mr. Gormley, um, you know, they had a hand in an advocacy advocacy in that. I know that you know, Mr. Gormley and I and others went to Worcester, and I think some others went to Holyoke uh, as we were going around trying to get, you know, engage with other districts and encourage them to join us. Um, so there was a lot of work that, that went into this and, um, you know, um, I'm glad to see it, it pay off. Um, I know Tom's got his hand up. He looks like he's gonna jump through the screen if I don't call on him, Tom, <laughs> go ahead. You know, just a couple of funny quips. Um, one of the most telling um, times was when we hired, we hired top-notch education counsel and they presented the complaint that we were ready to file to the attorney general, Maura Healy. And that um, I think meeting as well as um, the pressure that was put on the governor. And, and I would love Superintendent Thomas to chime in on this at the, at the unveiling of the William G. Carpenter um, <laughs> parking garage, the governor was there I knew and, you were going to say this. And uh, Superintendent Thomas and I were introduced to him. 
and he gave us the, the, the dirtiest of stairs that could have melted steel when he knew who we were and, and that he had to open up his checkbook to the city of Brockton. Mike, am I not correct? With uh, you're right on. Yeah, we went up and we actually went up to him to thank him for signing the, oh, yeah. he for wanted signing the student city. opportunity act into law. Yeah. And yeah, he it was happy. Like we just, it. Yeah. it looked like we just, um, you know, stepped on his new kitten. It was not, um, it was not pretty. It wasn't a warm and fuzzy feeling, was it? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, well uh, I just wanted to share that with everyone. Yeah, no, I, 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 but Tom, you hit the nail on the head, his checkbook, but it's not his checkbook. <laughs> you know, that's taxpayer money. And, and we as a city of 100,000 some odd people, we, we contribute to that tax base. Yeah, but he wanted to give it to the communities that support him. Mm, not to yeah. not to the urbans who don't really support the governor right right well that's why we were what is it i'm mad as hell and i'm not going to take it anymore the old saying from that some old movie anyway we spoke up and the other urbans joined us and we got it done so all right let's keep moving um the next item on the agenda is the school is a school warehouse i'm not sure if Aldo that's aldo or... and dr Cobbs. all right uh, um, good sure, I'll, I'll jump in on this one. So the um, we we published the uh, RFP for the school warehouse. Um, it went out on the 18th of uh, January, and it had, it closes on the, on the 19th. Will be the bid opening um, on February 19th at 10 a.m. Um, at this point in time, you know we've identified some spaces that will work for the for the buses, and, and again consolidating operations for you know for for the school department. Um, at this point, we have one um, bidder that has returned the um, interest in, in intent to bid um, for the for the RFP. So you know that's where we stand so far. Moving forward with it. And this facility, obviously, again, you talked about would be for the the buses. Um, what else is there? Any other operations we have that you're thinking would be consolidated into there Absolutely. or not at this time? Uh, yeah, good question. All the operations, you know, I plan to move the uh, facilities, you know, you know, operations over there with all of our vehicles, the warehouse storage for the facilities, um, the I, information technology um, department, uh, the nursing department. Um, there's a lot of office space as well as warehouse space that we'll use. And obviously it will house the bus dispatch uh, depot and, and the parking for all the buses and pretty much all of our vehicles will, will park over there. Okay. We're, so currently, we're, we're currently using two locations, Foster Street and Perkins. So we're paying separate leases there. So what we put out here is a five-year lease. Um, the way it's gone out is a, a, a basically five one-year leases, but we're getting some grumblings that that's on a space that large that they don't want five one-year. They want one five-year. So basically the response is, it's an RFP. Put in what you propose and the school committee will, do, will discuss it. We'll, we'll see. So. Okay, great, great. Um, all right, any questions from the committee on that matter? No. All right. Tony. Uh, Hobbs, I'll, oh, Tony, go ahead. So we're going to, with the new location, Foster Street and Perkins is out of the equation altogether. That's, that's the plan. We'll have to phase it out. Absolutely. All right. Now, um, uh, is it wasn't the uh, Foster Street just a contract just renegotiated? Is it like three years or is it one year? I just want to. It's a three year contract, and we're in I think year two of it now. But I think, I think so. Aldo, it's it's only it's three one year contracts actually. Yeah, I think we you go one it. at a time. Yes, mm -hmm. you we have the option every year to um, yep. to leave. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else? Um, Perkins, how long is that contract and where are we in it? Do we know? We did three six month contracts there. Okay. And that was because we were using some of the CARES Act money, which ended in December. So okay. we did three six month pieces. And that was really okay. an emergency kind of situation. Just we had so much surplus furniture to move out of the schools that we really needed a, another place to store it. You know? That's the place we went with the, the surplus furniture. All right, Correct. all right, now it makes, 
Thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. I knew we had done that and I just didn't remember that it was Perkins. Yeah, and okay. depending on how we, we do with the warehouse bid, I mean, Foster Street's been a great location. We, we may decide to keep it. You know, it's up to the school committee, but we'll have different proposals. Right. Uh, you know, the, the rent there isn't, isn't that extreme, um, but we can discuss that. Yeah, I think if I remember right, it was something in the three to four dollars a square right. range. Yeah, it's just you know for for the for the facilities you know particularly for the storage and, and supplies and, and you know it, it's really getting small and limited for what they can actually store in the facility at any, any given time right right mr Have sullivan we... yes i had two quick questions for dr cobbs yep. the uh montello street warehouse is is that being used at all right now N not yet. We're we're looking to try to again if we have need for more excess furniture storage because we have pretty much filled the Perkins Street uh, location. So if we have to, yeah, as we open in the hybrid um, model, we have to move more furniture. We'll we may store some surplus furniture there, but not at this time yet. And the other question was, the uh, February nineteenth is the closing. That everybody has to have their bid in by then. Right. Is that's that a bid opening day. That's correct. Oh, it's opening day. Okay. Right. okay. Thank you. That's it. Mr. Rodriguez. You, you muted. Tony. Tony. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, have we looked at actual ownership of uh, any property um, acquiring it instead of leasing it um, as a, you know, saving cost measure or I don't know if the mayor wants to shine in if there's any property out there I mean we do have some schools that are closed down and you know how big is the facility I mean we have the Howard school is there plans on that on the city side or is that not enough space yeah Mr. Rodriguez I think I think the Howard school is in the queue right now potentially to uh, replace the fire station up there uh, on North Main Street um, for many reasons, um, and we'll, you know, we can go over that when, 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 and if we decide to go that route. But um, we, we have Dr. Cobbs, myself, Aldo, Mike, and Troy. Um, you know, my thought would be always to try to acquire something, right, and uh, pay off the mortgage, and it's your asset. Um, the, there's a couple of locations in Brockton we've we've tried to uh, engage. Uh, we've been told no, they want to rent it, they want to keep it as a as a portfolio asset. So. Um, you know, we're welcome to entertain anything. If anybody has any suggestions that they're aware of, of course, we'd, uh, we'd love to talk about that. One thing that we are interested in, and it's not for sale at this time, is the, uh, the vacant stop and shop across from Brockton High on Belmont Street. It's for rent. It's not for sale, but great location. Agreed, agreed. Thank or you. even there's that whole... Um, section down on the south end used to be Kmart and Shaw's. I don't know. I mean, again, I don't know if they're looking to sell. But yeah, I've cool. actually looked into that property and it, it's still actually leased by Kmart, you know, and the owner, we, we looked at that as, as a, a emergency storage when we when we went into the Perkins Ave uh, place and the owner was same thing was interested in a, a long term lease and, and not, you know, you know, um, selling at this point in time. But the Kmart still has it. I think they still had five years left on the lease, you know, for the, the Kmart. <laughs> That's why well, it's not looking to sell it. No, it's just like the exactly. It's just like the old, you know, uh, Shaw's down the south, and you know they they stay have a ten year lease. You know they don't plan on leasing anybody else going in there anytime soon to keep it empty. So, so, so the owner owner is happy to sit on it and, and get and get what they want. Get paid and have nobody in there, and you know the city just gets an empty property. That's nice. Exactly. Great. Thanks. Um, obviously, I know it's not your fault, but <laughs> okay. Any other comment or question on this? All right. Okay. Uh, is there any other business to come before finance? All right. Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We have a second. second. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Sullivan, properly seconded by Mrs. Sullivan. I'll call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. All right. The vice chair says yes. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minichello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. We are adjourned. Thank you for your time this evening. <laughs>